Challenge Cup is our feature race at Happy Valley on Wednesday night on the back of a huge day at Chartin on Sunday. We'll look back on that very shortly, but a very warm welcome to Racing to Win. I'm Andrew Lejeune, joined here in the studio by Brett Davis, our race caller, and Tom Wood, our race caller as well. And uh, Tom, the feature race, actually has a derby entrant as well in Red Warrior. Certainly does, and I think John Size, Joe Marira will play a big part in a couple of the uh, Class 2 races uh, on Wednesday night. Of course, Red Warrior going around in that. He's had a, a run of placings recently. He did win four starts ago. And the talented three-year-old going around in the uh, last race, Country Star, who's now off a, a mark of 92. He's getting to the top of the weights, but he's taken it all before him so far. It's a 40-point rise since the start of the season, Brett. That's incredible. Uh, jackpot, so there's a nice one in the TT. There is, Andrew, yes. Plenty of jackpot money around, as Paul would say. It's uh, it's free money that's floating around. And, um, <laughs> well, you have to be a part of it, don't you? So get involved in that uh, jackpot with the Triple Trio. Just on the point there with um, Country Star and Red Warrior, both those two are right at the top of the, the board as well with regards to the Hong Kong Million Challenge. This is the penultimate meeting regarding that challenge as well. There's only three points, two points between three horses, so uh, that's a real um, nutcracker itself and a high achievement bonus on offer for Red Warrior too. All right, there you go. Speaking of leaderboards as well, Douglas White sits the top of the most winners ridden. This is his final ever Happy Valley. It certainly is. Of course, he got uh, at the at the Sunday meeting back in uh, October, it was. He got uh, 1,800 winners there. That was mm. on Good Omen. He rides Good Omen uh, again on Wednesday night and he'll uh, bow out from Happy Valley. Could be a Good Omen. We will see three rides. I wish Douglas the very best of luck. There will be a um, bit of a send-off for Douglas White, as there should be as well, at Happy Valley tomorrow. So make sure you can get down and cheer him on. Right, as far as the weekend was concerned, just off the back of, let's have a look at that with our racing review. It's been a week of change for the Hong Kong training ranks. Fresh off the announcement that Douglas White was retiring from race riding to take up a trainer's license, Frankie Law announced that he is the latest member of the Big Race Trainers Club, landing the Hong Kong Classic Mile with Furore just a month after his HKIR double. Furore ranged up to Kaying Star, Super Rich Mission Tycoon, Dark Dream and Harmony Victory, but Furore is roaring away with the Classic Mile. The win came at a cost for Furore's rider, Hugh Bowman, who was suspended for three meetings for interference. The flow-on effect of the interference was felt by a number of horses, including the favourite, Dark Dream. Yeah, the draw probably didn't help, and when I was coming to run, it just got, got uh, knocked out twice, like in this race, so but he's still a nice horse. Frankie Law wasn't the only trainer celebrating at Sha Tin on Sunday, however. As earlier on, Tony Cruz brought up his 1200th victory as a trainer when Exultant saluted in the Group 3 Centenary Vase. Exultant sprinted to the lead with 100 to go. Donoso running on from the back with romantic touch, but it's the Vase winner. He'll do it again. Exultant goes on to score in the Centenary Vase. Exultant will now head to the Hong Kong Gold Cup next month before a potential trip to the UAE for the Dubai World Cup meeting. The highlight of Sunday's undercard came from emerging sprinter Regency Legend, who overcame the top weight to remain undefeated in his Hong Kong career. Favourite getting his head in front right on the wire, Regency Legend goes on his merry way and wins again. Danny Shum's three-year-old has now had three starts for three wins and looks an exciting prospect, with the Hong Kong sprint a long-term target for the son of King. The next step on the road to the Derby is the running of the Hong Kong Classic Cup on February 17. A blockbuster meeting, which will also feature the Group 1 Hong Kong Gold Cup and the Group 1 Queen Silver Jubilee Cup. That was last year's race. Of course, Beauty Generation beat the clock. Looking forward to seeing them clash again. Um, let's start with the, the Classic Mile, Tom. The Derby picture any clearer? I think we've narrowed it down to a couple at least potentially. Uh, I think the, the run of the race still was Dark Dream considering he got uh, bashed in the straight. Uh, Furore was uh, very, very good. So Frankie Law's got two great chances going into the race. Um, there were horses that were unlucky in the race like uh, Harmony Victory. Ka Ying Star got a pretty good run through and it was uh, discovered the day after the race uh, that Super Rich pulled up lame and he also had restricted action, so he might have had the odd excuse. All right, the centenary vice, two stories out of that, I suppose, Brett, was one was the tactics and um, two exalted, really announcing himself as, you know, a proper group horse. Well, oh. he, he already had, but, you know, he 
versatile is what I'm saying, you know, down to the 1800 metres. Yeah, that's right. And he actually got a pretty hefty bump out of the gates. It mm. turned out to be a real positive in the end because there was that frantic pace uh, with Pingu Spark, obviously uh, setting up a, a couple of solid sectionals early. But look, he's really going at the top of his game, Exalton. Um, the Gold Cup day, as Ed mentioned there in that little package, a Gold Cup, Queen Silver Jubilee Cup and the Classic Cup. It's going to be a really good day of racing. Uh, coming up in February. So plenty to look forward to. There were plenty of highlights on the weekend. Certainly were, yeah. All right, those are the big winners so on the weekend. We can see as far as the ratings could. Insultant with three now makes him um, clear. Second highest rated horse um, in Hong Kong. Fury got a decent whack. As did Mission Tycoon. Better run from him. It was. I must say, when I was calling the race, Furore went past me like he was going quicker than anything else in the race. So I was quite taken with the last 100 metres of Furore and... Uh, yeah, up to 104 now, obviously down the bottom. Diamond Legend got uh, one of those wins that Tony Cruz required for the mm. 1,200. Yeah. Hasn't, uh, hasn't Frankie Law got King Opie uh, fired up well at yeah. the moment? And uh, quickly on Regency Legend, his half-brother uh, sold at the sales today for $500,000 to his same owner, so we're likely to see him here in the future. Oh, there we go. All right, Might be a bargain. The big winners uh, on the weekend. We'll see if we can find you some more now with our horses to follow. All right, so there's lots of first starters on the weekend. Tom, what are you offering? Mm. Okay, I've gone with uh, one of the later races on the program, if not the uh, last race. It was with uh, Monster Car Car. Now, he was well back in this uh, race. It was over 1,400 metres. He's got a uh, group form coming from New Zealand. You can see him back there in the, the pink cap. He's got the shades on. He was the quickest 400 home in this race, 22.40. King Opie was able to win this race uh, with perfect match uh, up on the pace as well. They were the top two in the in-home run, uh, running into a, a minor position, but uh, he made good ground over the concluding uh, stages. You commented Andrew, he looked fit and ready to go mm. and I don't think it'll take too much more to bring him on. Monster car car. Yeah, he was the best part of 200 to 1 there as well, so um, they might have found one hopefully. Brett, what have you got? It's a good name too, I like it, Monster car car. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go for one called uh, Triumphant Horse who I thought actually ran a pretty good race or considered. He was deep for most of the trip. There was some money for him late in the betting. A former um, Brisbane horse initially, one at the Sunshine Coast on a soft track, that's where he shed his maiden status and then eventually went down to Melbourne straight after that basically and then had four or five starts in Melbourne where he won at Sandown, ran second at Cranbourne. I just like the way he actually stuck on here after the torrid run he'd had. That's a good form line. Grade one, shimmer and shine, arrow happiness. There's a lot of nice horses there and I think he'll only improve. I thought Bethany ran quite well in the same race too. Yeah, he was very stirred up, Bethany, in the, mm. in the yard, but a good run from him. Um, for me, I've um, found a first starter as well. Precious ship, and I'm not choosing this because I like the name, it's a difficult one to, uh, to say, but this is Regency Legend winning. Now, if we're saying he's three from three Regency Legend, if we're saying what well, Danny Shum's saying is a Group 1 horse for next season, this is Precious ship on his very first Hong Kong start, and he's beaten, what, two and a half, three lengths or something? A super run. Um, good form out of Ireland, um, placed in a, a couple of listed races and a maiden win as well, but he finished off really strongly there. I think he might be all right. The fact that he had a little setback too, as we know, he didn't get to the races for his first intended start. Um, positive, definitely. And we know what time Regency Legend came in. Uh, 21.96 for the last mm. 400 metres, so uh, that made his run that, look even better. That's Paul Lally's favourite horse at the moment, by the way. Precious, Precious ship. ship. Precious he loves ship. saying that. There you go. All right, <laughs> so those are the horses to follow. These are the uh, suspensions and fines out of the weekend. Easy go, easy win. Chad got a couple of days and a $20,000 fine. That's out of the, um, out of the Marlin... Well, Ed discussed that in the racing review there. Uh, three days careless riding plus 75,000 on Fiore, who took out the Hong Kong Classic Mile. All right, that wraps up the, the weekend. So we start to look ahead to Happy Valley now on Wednesday nights, and the horse is not going round. Manful Star, it was interesting, Manful Star, up to the 1650, now replaced by Dragon Regiment. Um, his layman is right four, I think, Manful Star, certainly layman in front, and Flying Force was layman in front as well. Placed by the first starter, Champions Way, Joe Moreira for John Size there. Race four, number four, Champions Way, now gets a start, and the judge has been replaced by Smart Leader. Zach Burton will be on board there. Race five, number three, there's a change. All right, meeting number 42 of the season. We're on the A course at Happy Valley this week for our eight race program, kicking off with a class five over the 1200 metres, headed by the show, who was a beaten favourite course and distance uh, two starts back. Down the field to Chartin last time out. Real giant class five for the first time. Lightning missile yet to win in 12. We'll roll forward from barrier one. Peace on earth course and distance win in November. Regency Honey dead heated with the show. That was back in October. Toto was a last start uh, winner at Chartin over the 1200. Happy Happy gets the cheek pieces back on. And Joyful Forever, who was fifth last time out behind a Toto. The show, best runner and Regency Honey have all been up at Chung Fa in the last 
30 days, uh, returning back uh, this month. Speed for the first time. Yeah, there should be some good pace in this. We know Regency Honey likes to uh, jump and run. Best runner should be able to uh, sit close to his outside. Lightning Missile should get a perfect run through from gate at number one compared to his last start effort where he was three wide, uh, no cover. Joyful Forever shouldn't be too far away in the show. He's in danger of being caught wide from gate number nine. Going to look at him firstly in the track work, actually, Tom. Uh, the show, been up to Chun Far, as Andrew highlighted. You can see he's continually working well. He'll be having start number 58, the rising nine-year-old. He's got the seven-pound claim. A one-time winner in the class. He has won four races in class four, so he's quite well placed. Best runner's been up at Chun Far, too. Um, there is something there with this horse. His overall record doesn't look that good, but there was one fourth that caught a few people's eye, and that's been it. But uh, his work and trials have been quite good leading into this. And Sunny Orient, obviously having his second start now for Ben O'Young after transferring from Tony Millard. He ran particularly well when second behind Jimson the Famous. It was on the all-weather, but he has been placed at the Valley a couple of times. So the fact that he's found some form and seems to be holding in the morning is positive. All right, and then Joe Murray will jump on board from mm. Barrier 8. We'll start off with some winning form here. A Toto, Joyful Dream, sorry, Joyful Forever and Peace on Earth at Sha Tin, though, over the 12. Yeah, he'd got a pretty good run in transit on this occasion, Ototo, and uh, Karis Teton jumped on board from gate number three. He was able to sit just behind the speed roll. The uh, the dollar eighty favourite Diamond Legend, who's since uh, come out and won. Grant Van Neerkirk jumps on board from gate number six. He's never been able to win at Happy Valley. He's placed on five occasions, so the, the winning record not there at uh, course and distance or Happy Valley, but um, he was very good on this occasion, I thought. Yeah, he won one race last season. He's won one race this season. The key to that, I think, was Tony Millard stepping up to a mile, toughened him up a little bit and then brought him back. So the fact that he's found a little bit of form after that scenario suggests he's a chance in this. All right. So the show, the match before, did dead heats uh, with Regency Honey earlier in the season. But this is him finishing third with Raichu and Happy Happy. Yep. And Victor Wong's had three rides on the horse for one third. We know that um, he can be effective in this class. I mentioned before he has won four races in class four, so he should be uh, competitive. Um, the, the nine barrier is the concern, though. It makes it tough for Victor from there. Yeah, he's going to have to really use up some gas mm. early if he's going to try and find the front, otherwise he's going to be caught wide. He's had an inappetence uh, re issue recently, too, yes. has the show. All right, we'll move on to uh, Sonny Orrick. We saw him there in track work. This is him on the all-weather. The pacifier he's wearing on this occasion will be off Wednesday night. Yeah, coming back onto the turf, as I said, a couple of placings at the Valley. Um, you know, going way back to the early stages of this horse's career, he looked quite progressive, but um, it just hasn't eventuated. 26 starts now, three seconds, one third. But this was an encouraging run. It's fair to say Jimson the Famous has been in reasonable form. Um, he obviously ran a nice race there on the surface and has shown a liking for the all-weather, but the form's there on the turf as well, so I'll give him a chance. Would you be taking him at 280, though? Negatory. <laughs> All right. He's the favourite, though, Brett? He is. He's not on top for me. I like Class 5 and I like to shop for value. And I'm going to go with Happy Happy. I just mentioned about the situation with Ototo going to a mile and then coming back to a sprint trip. Well, Happy Happy's had three, two runs over a mile and one over 1,800. Was well tried in that race behind the joy of giving. So I'm going to take a little chance here. Back in trip, some extra fitness underneath his belt. Chadwick on, cheek pieces as well. Chadwick has placed on this horse the only time he's finished in the frame that he can run over the top potentially at a price. Ra Chu, Sunny Orient Lightning Missile, 10, 6, 9, 4. I'm going to have a little each way on the 10. I'll take a chance uh, with uh, Regency Honey, who's likely to be up on the pace, uh, around about 7.8 in the uh, market at the moment, uh, Regency Honey. If uh, he can get a good run in transit, he might be there at the finisher field. Uh, Ototo, he looks to be one of the dangers at the show. If he can potentially get into a, a position, maybe one off the fence from that wide draw in Sunny Orient, my next best, but uh, short in the market at the moment. 7, 8, 1 and 9. Yeah, I didn't think there was much between the principles uh, here, but ultimately came down the side of Raichu from a good barrier, barrier 2 for him. Right, feature race reminder is race number six. Quick break for us, though. Back right after this.